people means Tilly has got to stay on her line till they've gone. Welcome to another video. My name is Michelle. Hope you're doing well. There's nothing new in the Summer Wells case uh, this morning, so I'm going to take the opportunity to talk about something different. And I want to tell you the story of Matthew Coleman. Now, this is brand new. It's just happened. The affidavit's just come out, just been released. I'll leave a link to that. It's been made public. I'll leave a link to that public link in the description box so you can read the affidavit for yourself. I'll give you kind of a brief summary, just in case you've never heard of this case, because it is brand new. A few channels have talked about it, so you may have heard of it. But I want to talk about what Matthew said when he was apprehended. While I have a walk around the woods, nice little stroll. It's a beautiful day this morning. While I do that, let's talk about it. So, Matthew Taylor Coleman. I think he was 40 years old. Got a wife called Abby and two children. I'm just going to call them K and R. That's what she used in the affidavit. So, I'll stick to that. So, K is a little boy, two years old. And R is a little girl, just 10 months old. Matthew was well educated, got a master's degree and doing really well for himself. Owned a surf school in Santa Barbara, California. Doing really well and based on their social media profile, they look like the perfect family. It's like shades of Chris Watts really, you know, it's just like this portrayal of the perfect family. And maybe it was the perfect family because Abby has said that she didn't know anything was wrong. Now, whether there was problems in the family that hasn't come out yet, I don't know. By appearances and based on what Abby has said, there were no red flags. So on the 7th of August this year, Matthew took off with the two kids. They were meant to be going camping, but he just took off, left Abby, Abby at home and took off with K and R. R was in a car seat, but he didn't have one with him, so he put her in a box. I don't know what kind of box, but that's what he said. Put her in a box and travelled from Santa Barbara over the border into Mexico. Now, Abby was concerned that he'd just taken off, and eventually she called the police and said, look, I'm not concerned about my children's safety. I just want to know where they are. And the officer that came to see her said, have you tried the Find My iPhone app? Because he had an iPhone. So she used the app and his phone was on and located in Mexico. He was located on his way back to the US, but he was on his own. Tilly, this way. Nice day brings all the people out, so Tilly's back on her line. <laughs> now, the CCTV of him checking into a hotel, so the little boy can be seen on the CCTV. Don't know where the little girl is, but took the kids to the hotel, but then by the 9th of August, both Kay and R were dead, murdered, by their father. Go on, you can do it. He took them to a remote location and uh, sorry if you're squeamish, this is horrible. He used a spear fishing gun to basically stab them through the heart. A little 10 month old baby. According to Matthew, she went first. So does that mean that the little boy Kay at two years old did he witness what his father did to his sister? And then the same thing happened to him. Now this is shades of little Bella, little Bella Watts, and having to sit through what Chris did to Cece. But little Kay didn't die straight away. So we had to stab them, move the spear around, and he cut his hand. Bless him, he cut his hand people over there now. There's people everywhere. This is why I prefer it to be raining. You don't get these fair weather dog walkers out. I come out rain or shine. These guys just come out whenever they feel like it. So he didn't try to deny anything. 
and you can read in the affidavit exactly what he said. Mm. Someone's broken the um, fence. Mm. I'm going to use the gate regardless because I like these little gates. How utterly horrendous is that? Now, the thing that interests me in this case is what Matthew said as to why he did it. What was his reason? And he said that he'd been listening to certain conspiracy theories. He believed that Abby, wife and mum, had serpent DNA. And his children were going to grow up to be monsters because their mother had serpent DNA. And therefore, he had to kill them to save the world. I know a little bit about the conspiracy theories, where I think he's going with it. Have you ever heard of David Icke? I've known David Icke, or known of David Icke, don't know him personally, since the 1980s. And I'm not saying David Icke has got anything to do with this directly. Please don't misquote me. I'm not saying David Icke caused this murder. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying the theories that kind of come from things that he and others say about serpents and reptiles. As for the last 30 odd years now, been rumbling along you know, in, in conspiracy theory circles. So let me tell you a little about David Icke. David Icke was a TV presenter in the UK, uh, commentating on football and things like that. He was a footballer as a, a youngster. Uh, by football, I mean soccer, you guys in America. I mean soccer, not, not your football. But he injured his knee. I think he had uh, got rheumatoid arthritis when he was very young, so he couldn't play. So he became a a TV presenter for the BBC. And at some point during the mid 80s, and I remember this distinctly, he had what I would call a psychotic break, but he called it enlightenment, like being enlightened. He appeared on a TV show called Wogan. This is sometime during the mid 80s. And he put forward his, his theory and he was laughed at, he was derided. But over the last 30 odd years, he's created quite a name for himself. He's written over 20 books. He was on YouTube with many, many subscribers. I think YouTube got rid of him last year when he was um, making a lot of um, suspect claims about COVID, the COVID pandemic. I've had COVID, it's very real guys. They banned him eventually. But one of his first theories that he put forward was that the British royal family and a whole range of other kind of, you know, notable people, you know, the, the well-to-do people within society, actually had lizard DNA. They could, they could basically morph into reptiles uh, because they were part of some ancient race had basically taken over the world, like, covertly. So when I heard that Matthew Coleman said that these little kids were monsters because their mother had serpent DNA, I immediately thought of David Icke and his conspiracy. And I wonder whether whatever Matthew was reading is, is kind of an offshoot of what David Icke's been talking about since the 1980s. It's the only thing I can... I can pin this on, the type of conspiracy that he could be talking about. That there's this secret race of lizard reptile people who are able to morph back into reptiles when they want, but they've spread their DNA, you know, far and wide. So there could be people living who have this lizard DNA and Nobody knows about it. So am I saying that these conspiracy theories are creating murderers? Not necessarily, because the vast majority of people who read these conspiracy theories, even if they think there's some truth in them, don't go on to commit murders. But I think what happens is, 
and this is just my opinion only, my opinion only, what I think happens is that certain people who've got mental illness, who develop mental illness, latch on to these conspiracy theories to try to understand what's going on in their own head. I say again, this is just my opinion, my speculation only. Anybody can have a psychotic break at any time. Just because you are mentally well one day doesn't mean to say you won't develop a mental illness. Schizophrenia, which affects around 1% of the population. Schizophrenia tends to start in late adolescence, early adulthood. But anybody can develop schizophrenic-like tendencies any time in their life. So I wonder, again, my speculation, I wonder whether Matthew was developing a mental illness like schizophrenia, didn't tell anyone about the visions he was having, because his wife had no idea about this, and he's lived with this for however long, maybe not for long. He's tried to make sense of it, and he's found these conspiracy theories, and he's run with it. And the very, very worst outcome happened because of that. Tilly. Oh, look. They've actually harvested one of the wheat fields. The tractor was here the other day. Tilly, uh, Cassie. Oops, there's a car. I better get a bit faster. I'm not going in that field, it's treacherous. Look at it. Just letting that car go past. They just go into the breakers yard. Come on, this way. Cassie. This way. Oh, there's someone else. Bloody hell. As well as the serpent DNA, reptile people conspiracy, I'm also tying with the idea that Matthew, who was religious, because of some kind of psychotic break, mental illness, has taken his basic religious beliefs and, and warped them and somehow woven them into a conspiratorial story. You know, Laurie Vallow believed that Tylee and uh, JJ were zombies. You know, shades of that as well, shades of that case. It'll be interesting to see once uh, Matthew has his psyche eval, what they think of him. But he was asked whether he knew what he did was wrong. And he said, yeah, he knew it was wrong to kill his children, but he had to do it to save the world. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that, whether he'll, um, he'll go back on that confession and there'll be a trial. But if he just pleads out, pleads guilty, you know, as per Chris Watts, we might never know the, the full details. What we do get to know because it's intriguing. I mean, it's, it's horrible. You know, my heart goes out to Abby. You know, she's lost her two little babies under the most horrific of circumstances. My heart goes out to her. In the understanding of the human mind and gleaning information about the criminal mind, why people commit crime, this is an absolutely fascinating case. And I'll definitely be keeping my eye on what happens. Uh, with that moving forward, because it is very, very new. You know, these, these little kids were found in a ditch on the 9th of August. They were found in a ditch somewhere in Mexico. Horrific, really, really horrific. I can survey the whole scene now, so I can, I can look for people before they, before they chance upon me. Can you see any people? Is it safe to let her off? I'll just get over the brow here and then I'll be able to see down the hill.
few weeks ago I did a video called the psychology of familicide so familicide is the, the killing the murder of your entire family so I did some research on it we're using Chris Watts as an example but I wonder what the psychological research has to say about Matthew Coleman you know usually people kill their entire family because they're at rock bottom they want to start a new life as per Chris Watts financial problems as per Chris Watts so I wonder whether we'll get to know you know whether the family did have you know the Coleman family did have financial problems whether there's more to this story I don't know it's too new to know but like I said I am going to keep my eye on this it fascinates me if you like psychology you like psychology videos um, I did a psychology video yesterday about the psychology of SA using Donald Wells as my example but when I use you know a particular person like Donald or Chris Watts it is just an example you know I'm, I'm using the published research from the psychological literature and just basically humanizing the findings and the statistics using someone that is the epitome of it I guess so um, so yeah that's all I've got for you today let me know your thoughts on Matthew Coleman let me know whether you think this is a really really sad case of severe mental illness or whether there's something else involved we could all speculate at this point because we have very little to go off so i've been michelle i hope you're doing well i'll see you in the next video and goodbye from miss tillington and cassie springer who is um, park kangaroo